What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited you're here. We're gonna talk all about how to cure decision-making fatigue today. So if you've ever felt like you have 20 different decisions to make and you don't know what the next best step is for you. So for example, what if you have to figure out whether or not you wanna start a YouTube channel, start a blog, start a Facebook page, you know, start doing Instagram videos, maybe start a funnel, maybe start an email list, maybe build this business, maybe do that, and then you end up kind of just doing a little bit of everything or a whole lot of nothing. That's the best, and I totally get what that feels like because I've been in that situation before where I felt like I was making all the almost wrong decisions in a way. So back when I was doing YouTube, just YouTube, I was picking up all these affiliate deals and I was like, okay, this seems like the next best decision right now. It seems like it's gonna work, but there was so many decisions coming at me where I had to pick like, okay, do I do this company? Do I do that? I don't really know. I, I didn't really know how to sift through that decision-making situation. So what I recommend to you guys, if you're ever in the situation where you feel like you wanna do something, maybe start your own business, maybe start a social media account, and you don't really know where to go, there's a couple different things you can do to really cure to your decision-making fatigue, and I don't want this to be something you do every single time. It needs to be something that happens naturally eventually, but you have to do some practice a little bit to eventually spend less time making that decision. So the first thing that's gonna help you make the decision is to just learn about what it is that you're gonna be doing. So for example, a YouTube channel. Do you really know how much goes into a YouTube channel? Are you really ready to commit to that? Because a YouTube channel is really difficult to grow. It's not something that's it's probably the hardest channel to grow actually, getting like people to not just watch the video but to press the subscribe button and keep watching all the time. It's not really easy and if you don't know what goes into it, you think you're gonna pick up a camera and get subscribers, it's not gonna happen. So if you don't know specifically about what you're gonna have to be doing, it's gonna be hard to make that decision. You're gonna have to do a little bit of research and spend time like, okay, has anybody ever talked about what it's really like to be a YouTuber? Let me look that up. Or what it's really like to do a podcast. Or maybe I can take a course on it. Or maybe I can do this. And number one, you wanna learn about what it is you'll have to be doing. And number two, does that fit with you as a person? So what I mean by that is that I would love for all of you guys to take a couple personality tests. I'll put some of my favorites below. But if you don't understand who you are as a human, um, you're not gonna understand what the best decision to make is for you. So for example, there's a ton of different kinds of people. There's introverted people, there's extroverted people, there's messy people, there's clean people, there's minimalistic people, there's all of these, all of the new trends and all of the new things people, there's materialistic, there's, um, people that are really good on video, people that are really good writers, people that are really good to think rather than to speak. And not that you shouldn't be practicing skills that aren't your best, but you do wanna start by doubling down on what you're really good at and what you like. So if you don't like something, maybe you start CrossFit and you hate it and you would rather do bodybuilding, you're not gonna keep doing it. You're not gonna keep going and you're gonna end up falling off and it's gonna be frustrating and you're gonna feel like this was the wrong decision and you wanna, you know, number one, figure out exactly what it's going to entail and number two, does it match with you as a human? Number three, not only does it match with your personality style, because there are personality styles out there that are really specific, but does it match your bigger mission and vision? I didn't know what that was when I was like 20. I was like, what is my bigger mission and vision? Someone help me figure out what my mission statement is. And again, it's from that last video that I talked to you guys about being unapologetic. You have to really dig deep and understand, okay, if I was put here to do something, what would that thing be? If it was not just one thing, maybe you're multi-passionate. What, um, what is something that you just love doing even though it is a hobby? Maybe it's like cooking and you love cooking. And maybe you wanna help people enhance their cooking skills and then make cooking easy for them so they can easily live a healthy lifestyle and make health really simple. And cooking is your thing and you just love to cook, so why not turn it into something? So doubling down on your strengths that match your personality, that match with what you really wanna do, is going to be the actual overall how to cure your decision-making situation on how to actually make the decision. But once you have that stuff down, once you kind of know, okay, what does this entail? Does this match me? Does it not? Then you're going to be gathering self-awareness skills. So being self-aware just means understanding how you are naturally and allowing yourself to feel like, okay, 
I am self-aware enough to know that this might not be the best decision for me right now, but it could be something I do in the future. And maybe I'm self-aware enough to know this relationship isn't for me right now, but I, I'm, I'm at least aware of that. And being aware is the first step to making decisions. So the, the next thing is the last thing that I have for you guys on decision-making fatigue and curing it and being able to make decisions more quickly and easily and strongly and being very proud of those decisions is to figure out how it feels. And this one feels a little woo-woo, so just bear with me right now. There's, our body has this like visceral feeling that you get when something comes your way and it either feels good or bad. And usually we feel that for a split second until our minds kick in and say, is this logical? Can I afford this? Is this something that's gonna be easy or is it gonna be difficult? Oh, it's difficult and I can't afford it? Fuck it, like let's not do it. But if your body in that initial split second, when you first hear about something and you feel it in your, your body somewhere, like your body is literally telling you, it's screaming at you like this feels good or this feels bad. And if it feels incongruent, if it feels out of alignment, if it feels off for some reason, you don't necessarily have to spend a whole line, a whole lot of time determining is this off, is this not off, and why is it off? A lot of people spend so much time figuring out why something feels that way rather than just listening to the what of this feels off, let's not do it. Let's say no. Let's be the no person or let's be the yes person who says yes, yes, yes to all these amazing opportunities because guess what? If it feels good to you to go do that, maybe it's terrifying, maybe it doesn't really make sense. Like when I moved to Los Angeles and quit nursing and then started doing this YouTube weird thing, it didn't really logically make sense. It was unsafe, it was risky, it was, I didn't know what I was really doing. But internally, I always tell this story, I literally felt this like, pull to go do it. I was like, there's this, I just have to, I just have to, like, I don't know what it is, but I just have to. And you have to get a little bit more aware of that as you're starting to make more and more decisions for your business, for your body, for your mind, for your relationship, whatever that is, because the more that you say yes to that feeling, the happier you're going to be. So when you start doing things that you like, you start doing things that you're good at, and you start doing things that feel really aligned with you and your body telling you, you're gonna have less trouble making decisions because guess what? The next time a confusing decision comes at you, you're gonna know, okay, number one, does this feel good? No, okay, maybe a little bit. So does this make sense? Do I know a little bit about it? And then you can go into the mind stuff. So I definitely would say, feel it, feel into it first and then really, really feel whether or not it's good for you or not. And then if you're still confused, you gotta, have to, you gotta do a little bit of research and really understand, does this fit, fit for me? Does this fit for my personality? Does it fit with my bigger mission and vision? And do I know about it? So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick decision-making fatigue type of video. Um, I know so many people struggle with this, so if this is you, if you resonate, give the video a thumbs up and like the video, comment below, let's talk a little bit about it. Happy to have some conversation, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.